In this video, we're going to take a peek inside my Spanish pantry and see what's there. You might be surprised the ingredients are all pretty simple. I don't use a lot of spices, and while I might have more types of rice and extra virgin olive oil than most home cooks in Spain, it's really easy and inexpensive to stock a pantry that helps you and your family eat the Mediterranean way every day. If you want to make sure that whenever you come across a Mediterranean-style recipe you're dying to try, or one of my videos, what should you have at the ready? What's always in the pantry in a Spanish kitchen? It's time to open the doors to my dispensa, the Spanish word for pantry, and take a peek inside. And before you bust me for being a little too tidy, my cupboard rarely looks this well, but I made a special effort for you guys. And because I buy so much of my ingredients at the Mercado, where everything's sold by weight, I have to have reusable airtight containers to store everything in. In my first video about the Mediterranean way to eat every day, I touched on every part of that balanced diet, which of course includes fresh fruits, vegetables, and lots of fish. And I promise we'll get into that when we go to the Mercados together to see how they shop in Spain. But today, we'll focus on pantry staples you can stock up on any time of the year, and especially when there's a good sale going on at your own grocery store. There are 11 indispensables in my Spanish pantry. And one bonus that most pantries will always stock. If I have these things on hand, chances are I'll be ready to whip up lots of classic Mediterranean dishes. It's probably no big surprise I start and oftentimes end with number one, extra virgin olive oil. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that extra virgin olive oil is central to my kitchen and central to the Mediterranean diet. I use it all the time. So if you want to start eating the Mediterranean way every day like I do, stock up on a good quality extra virgin olive oil or two. I cook with it. I finish salads and other dishes with it. I even fry with it. And if you're interested in learning more, you can find an entire four-part course about olive oil on my channel. Number two, whole grains, rice, and potatoes. Rice in the form of paella is probably the best known dish of Spain, but potatoes run a really close second in the Spanish pantry, and all kinds of whole grains are popular too. Core to the second wedge of the Mediterranean diet, these ingredients are nutritious fundamentals that make an appearance on the plate at least a couple of times a day. Because rice is one of my personal favorite comfort foods, I stock more than a few different types, but one or two will do. Long or short grain, whole grain, even wild rice once in a while. And of course, fresh bread from the bakery is another daily essential of the Spanish diet. Number three, beans and lentils and plenty of stock. As you can see, I stock up on all kinds of dried beans and lentils, but I also make sure I have cooked beans from a jar when I'm looking for a really nutritious fast lunch, or I forgot to soak them overnight. All it takes is a quick rinse under cold water, a box of broth, and a handful of herbs and spices, and if I have them in the fridge, I toss in a few handfuls of cut up veggies like carrots and onions and broccoli. Lentils, of course, are even easier and require zero pre-planning. Only 15 minutes or so to put together a really hearty lunch that makes quick work of adding protein and fiber to your day. No wonder Spanish households serve lentils every single week. While it's great to make your own stock, I'm a big believer in finding a good brand and keeping plenty of boxes on hand in the pantry. When my time is short, my energy is low, <laughs> low salt box stock can be a lifesaver. Number four, garlic and onions. Well, as they say, one in Spain. Garlic and onions are two of the most essential ingredients that many Spanish recipes include. And while they're not officially in my pantry, my kitchen is never without them. So if you want to try many of my recipes and other Spanish dishes, just make sure these two flavor builders are in your kitchen too. Number five, tomatoes. Whether they're whole, in a sauce, or tomato paste, and whether they're in season or I'm reaching for a can or a jar from the pantry, tomatoes in one form or another are an essential part of the Mediterranean diet. 
In Spain, a toasted baguette with grated tomatoes is the most popular way to start the day. Gazpacho for midday lunch, a pile of fresh tomato wedges with tuna for tapas time. You just can't live in the Mediterranean region without running into this core ingredient every day. Number six, spices, paprikas, saffron, salt, and pepper. You might be surprised to learn that Spanish cooking doesn't include a lot of spices. I know I was when I first moved here from California. Unlike Mexican cooking, Spanish fare is generally not very spicy. It's just super flavorful. The must-have essentials are pretty simple. A couple types of paprika, sweet, spicy, and smoky, known as pimentón, that come from dried ground and smoked peppers. Paprika is used almost universally in Spanish cuisine. Saffron, the world's most expensive spice, is essential to dishes like paella, but a little goes a long, long way. I infuse a few dried threads in some hot water. I add them to soups or stews, rice dishes, to create that unmistakably Spanish fragrance and sunny, warm yellow color. And finally, just some Mediterranean sea salt and sometimes a little ground pepper. Of course, other parts of the Mediterranean region love, love, love all sorts of spices, and I do too. So my personal stash includes many more toys to play with, but you don't have to stock up on a lot of spices to start eating the Mediterranean way every day. Number seven, herbs. Rosemary, oregano, bay leaf, sage, and parsley. I might not keep these herbs literally in my pantry because I grow them all year long in my kitchen cutting garden outside, but whether you store them dried or cut them fresh, these five herbs show up in Spanish dishes all the time. Rosemary, oregano, bay leaf, sage, and parsley are the flavor workhorses of my Mediterranean kitchen. Number eight, canned goods. When you live in the mountains like we do, you already know how handy canned goods are. But until you live in Spain, you might not know that this country is world-renowned for super high-quality canned ingredients called conservas. They aren't backup ingredients. They are prized parts of a pantry. I always have canned tuna packed in olive oil naturally and all sorts of shellfish like sardines and clams and mussels in the pantry. There are jars of pickled peppers when I want to add a little zing to a dish or canned asparagus and sweet bell peppers, red peppers, known as piquillos that I stuff with cheese for a quick little side dish. And our absolute heart healthy favorite? anchovies. Whether they're canned or jarred or salted, they end up in salad dressings, in stews, in soups, and I top little top of treats with them, or I spread it on flatbread when I'm baking it at home. Number nine, olives. You wouldn't believe how many types of cured olives you can find at the outdoor markets here. They're healthy, they're really nutritious, and they are loaded with flavor. I like to keep some in the fridge that I pick up at the Sunday market, and I have some in cans and jars in the pantry. My favorite way though to serve them is roasted and hot from the oven. I toss them with a little olive oil and I mix in some fresh herbs like rosemary and some slices of lemon peel. Oh my gosh, it's so great. You just have to try it. Number 10, nuts. All sorts of nuts are popular in Mediterranean cooking. Here on the farm, we harvest almonds and hazelnuts, but our pitiful walnut tree only delivers about two per year. So that means we also buy a lot of nuts at the market. The whole food fat source of nuts and seeds are super good for you. They're a great addition to a daily diet because they're packed with fiber, essential minerals, and loaded with flavor. I even like to blend them and mix them into sauces to thicken them up a little bit. And living in the heart of the second largest almond producing region in the world outside of California, it's only natural that George and I eat almonds almost every day. And I love to make that Spanish gluten-free classic cake, Tarta de Santiago. We're almost at the end. So let's talk about number 11, sherry vinegar and other vinegars. Vinegar is a really important part of any pantry because it's the fastest way to add a bit of acid to any dish, balancing out fats and flavor. 
here, the most popular vinegar is a sherry vinegar that comes from the Southern Hereth region. You've probably seen me reach for it many times in my recipes. It has a pretty sharp and really distinctive flavor. I love to use it in salad dressings. And gazpacho just wouldn't taste like gazpacho without it. But it's a great idea to keep others on hand, like apple cider vinegar, rice vinegar, wine vinegars, and my hands down favorite go-to, true Italian balsamic vinegar. I love it. These are all an important part of my pantry essentials, but just find out whatever vinegar suits your personal taste buds and add them to your stash. And that bonus pantry ingredient? Well, knowing it's a heart healthy option, it's always nice to have a bottle or two of red wine on hand to go with all these wonderful dishes. I really hope this peek in my Spanish pantry helped give you an idea of how to stock your own personal pantry wherever you live. So start your healthy journey and click on this playlist to continue down the super delicious path to eating the Mediterranean way every day. Wayne Provecho.